In previous lesson, we have configured our very basic Spring Boot application to support GSP pages. In this lesson, we will configure this application to support another very popular Java server-side template engine that is called Timeleaf. If you are familiar with Timeleaf, but you prefer to use GSP instead of Timeleaf, then you can skip this lesson. So to add Timeleaf support to our Spring Boot project, we will need to add one dependency. I will open a browser window and I will go to mavenrepository.com and search for that dependency. The dependency is called Timeleaf. And I'm going to look for Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf. This is a second item in the search result. So I will click on it. I will open one of its versions and will copy its XML code snippet to my project. I will go to pomxml and will add it to my project. Now, because I'm not going to use GSP anymore, I will select the JSTL and Tomcat embed Jasper dependencies and I will delete them. Now I have only Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter Test, only these two dependencies and one more dependency, which is a dependency for Timeleaf. Now I will delete its version and will let the current Spring Boot version to manage its version like this. Now I can save changes to my pomxml file and reload Maven changes by clicking on this button here or if you're using a different development environment, then you should be able to do a right mouse click on pomxml and then choose Maven and then reload project. And this will make Maven fetch the time leave dependency. All right. So now this is a very basic Spring Boot application that supports Spring Web MVC and time leave. Because I'm not going to use GSP in this project anymore, I will also delete the GSP page and the folders that I have created in previous lesson. So I can delete this home GSP page and I can actually delete the GSP folder, web in folder and the entire web app folder. I don't need these folders anymore. Now I will go to application properties file and I will also delete this configuration that I have created in previous lesson and save it and close it. All right, so now this is a very basic Spring Boot application that does not have any support for GSP anymore. It has a single controller class with a single method that simply returns the name of the view that needs to be presented to a user. Now, because the name of the view is home, I will need to create a time lift template that is also called home and it will need to be called home.html actually. So let's create this file and see if it works. Now, timelift templates are placed into templates folder that is inside of resources folder. All right, so I will select templates folder and inside of templates folder, I'll create a new HTML file and I will need to call it home.html. Okay, and this is because the view that has been returned from our method is also called home. So this is a very basic HTML page. And for me to make it support timelift templates, I'll need to add a namespace property to HTML tag. So it is XML namespace colon th equals, and then in double quotes, I'll provide a timelift domain name, http www.timelift.org. like this. And to make it actually print something, I will add a very basic time leaf expression. Notice that this expression has double quotes, but the text that is printing is also inside of the single quotes. Now, at this moment, this is a very basic expression that does not access any Java objects yet. But I will show you how to access Java object in one of the following video lessons. All right, so let's save our home HTML file and let's run this Spring Boot application to see how it works. I will open a terminal window and to run Spring Boot application using command line, I can use Maven clean 
space package to remove the previously built archive and to package a new archive. And now I can use maven sprint dash boot colon run to run this sprint boot application. All right, so it started on port number 8080. And to get the home HTML page displayed, I'll need to access the root resource of my application. And this is because of the forward slash that I have used inside of the git mapping for this method that returns home view. All right, so I will need to open a new browser window and then go to localhost port number 8080. And now I can either hit enter right away or add the forward slash for the root resource and hit enter to get my HTML page displayed. And here's output from our time lift template. All right, so it is working well. And this proves that we were able to successfully configure our very basic Spring Boot application to support time lift templates. Let's continue.